Was popping, was popping, was popping. Welcome to Nikki and Moose. I'm Nikki. That's Moose. What's up, Moose? What up, y'all? And we have a very special, special guest, okay? Like, can I say this is like the this man makes one of the best grits I've ever had, and I'm a New Yorker, and I'm not even supposed to say this. Like, like we don't even eat grits. So right. the fact that I'm saying that, and I went for like three, four times, is something that we got to talk about. But um, entrepreneur, speaker, and owner of has to be the number one. But it's you know some people made the bait. I'm going to say the number one restaurant, not. Not breakfast, not nothing like that restaurant in Houston, Texas. Listen, I, uh, m- uh, just say the name. Just say the name. Just yeah. say the name. Yeah, the, the, the one and only man, the owner, uh, the owner of the, make sure you add the, by the way, we got uh, specific instructions on the, the <laughs> breakfast club. Okay, the breakfast club. Man, we are so excited. We are so excited. Yeah, this one's going to be special. You hear him in the background. You hear him in the background. Marcus Davis. This is yeah, about to be it's about to be a crazy episode. Let me let me just get into this intro. Two kids from Queens cut from a different cloth. Now, joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never before seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force, but more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. So, I'm not going to make you wait no more. You going to see him or for our audio listeners, you about to hear him. You heard him a little bit, but, but mm-hmm. Marcus, what's popping? Uh, can we talk uh, about, can we just like for, for my audio listeners, he has yeah. all his product in the back. Okay. Like <laughs> everything to make you hungry. Like right. he makes it feel like I can actually do this myself knowing it won't even come close. It won't be but, the same. No, yeah, it won't be the same. <laughs> so you're gonna want to come to 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 the spot. But just looking at it makes makes me feel like I should grab all of it. And knowing darn well, I'm not gonna cook none of that. But what's up? <laughs> hey, look, look. It, just just grab it. Just grab it. Long, long as you you have it in your in your in your uh, pantry and you're covered, then you, you're good to go. But it's yeah, it, it, it will help. You. It will improve your skills. I will say that hey. it, it can and, and will improve your skills. Hey, now, I, I don't know where your saying. skill set is right now. I I'm just black and Puerto Rican. I could do my stuff. I could do my stuff. <laughs> I'm black and Puerto Rican. You know, <laughs> it's not like I'm not one of those. I can't cook. I cook what I need to cook. And it's really good. You know what I mean? So that's but I we can't. Go, we, go, we, go, we have to check it out. Moose, can you vouch for that? No, no. He, we, we, uh, I have, yeah, I haven't tried the cooking, but uh, we go you know, out. We, we go just out to eat. This is why distance. I'm chubby. Yeah. This is why I'm chubby because we go out to eat, and then you, right. if you chill with moose, you have like three desserts. So oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. No. 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 Absolutely. No. But anyways, uh, h- how are you feeling? How's things? Man, things are going fantastic. I feel great. Uh, I'm excited uh, to be here. Not, not, not as a cliche, but I am genuinely. Uh, excited to 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 join the two of you on 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 this podcast. It is uh it is obviously one of my favorites. And um, man, I had, my mama just left. I told <laughs> my mama just left. So I finally made it. I'm on the Nikki Moose show. So See? you your son is big time, mama. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm man. just saying. I'm just saying. But uh, Moose, I, I want you. I want you to start this off, and we do what we do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we'll we'll give more of the backstory on this, especially on the after show. But Marcus, we 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 want you to uh, just give us the how this thing came together. I mean, what people see today is twenty years in coming. You give us a phenomenal kind of backstory and introduced us to how the all the entire idea and the vision and the plan came together. And, and I love how you did that. But for those of you, for those uh, for those who don't know you, give them a quick introduction about who is the man behind this uh, wonderful idea and concept that they see now today. You know, when when you ask the question of how did it come in, into into being, and it, it is quite simply uh, through entrepreneurship. 
And my definition of entrepreneurship is filling a void in the marketplace that the marketplace is calling for consciously or subconsciously. And 20 years ago, uh, 21, 22 years ago, when I was writing a business plan uh, for this concept, uh, my great city, the city of Houston, uh, had a void in the breakfast uh, scene. It had a void in um, the the African American eatery scene. I had a void in what I call the the, the urban eatery, uh, that that a place that was synonymous with the city. And I wanted to fill uh, all, all of those voids: breakfast, restaurant, coffee shop. And a place that repped, that put on for a city. We was putting on for the city before the song came out. They just, they, they knew what we were doing. <laughs> Talk about it. Talk yeah. about it. So that, 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 that's how it came in, 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 into, into existence. When you ask who is the man behind it, Jerry and Betty Davis's uh, middle child. Uh, my, my father uh, was, was my sphere of influence behind being in the hospitality uh, industry. My dad, who was a, caterer by, he, he was an educator by profession and his two passions uh, were food and music. And so uh, his side gig or side hustle, as we say, uh, was uh, he was a musician and he was also a, a, a great cook. And I don't mean these side like side, he was, they were on the side, but he was absolutely great at both of them. Uh, hell of a pianist and, and, a, and a hell of a cook. And he uh, introduced me into hospitality through uh, uh, entertaining at home. I grew up, you know, I grew up a church boy. Sunday morning, we we get up for the sun, get up and go to church, and we there all day. And we come home uh, in between and have uh, dinner. And my house was the house that people uh, like to congregate at because my father made all the great food. So that that was my my introduction uh, into hospitality. That was my introduction into uh, uh, entertaining and uh, my introduction into great tasting food. I grew up with a with a luxury. I, I don't know how you guys grew up, but I grew up with with a luxury, and I didn't know it was a luxury at the time. Uh, it is a luxury to have somebody in your in your house that's cold on that stove, right? It, it is an absolute luxury that that you know, that you grow up in a house that somebody got skills uh, in, in, in the kitchen. And my father was uh, was was extremely gifted when it came uh, to food. He, he was he was master. He was creative. So that's that's how I got into this. And, you know, wanting to fill those voids in um, in, in my city is how the Breakfast Club, the concept of the Breakfast Club came about. Hmm. Sheesh. Look, OK. I go, I go many ways with this. I'm going to go with this way, right? So it has to be the go-to spot in Houston. Like you've yeah. had, I think every celebrity hit that spot. Yeah. Social media posts all over the place. Like my question to you is how did we get the important people to come there? Like, I think a lot of people, when they're trying to grow their their brands and their businesses, they're trying to figure out how do we get those influencers' attention? Yeah. How do we, you know, how do we create those different types of relationships? Like, how? what did you find that this is what I did that instantly made want everybody to come yeah. no matter if they were the regular nine to five person or the A-list celebrity. Right. So look, uh, two words. How did, how did we get that to happen? Uh, I would have to say by intention. Uh, it was very deliberate. And, and let's, let's back this up. Let's make sure we're talking about, I uh, understand what we're talking about. We're talking about the pre IG, the pre FB, the pre Twitter world. We're talking in 2001 when I opened these doors, uh, we didn't have uh, the world at the touch at, the, at our fingertips. Right. So we had to be very strategic, very creative uh, in how we were going to uh, attract folks from across the country. And when I say by intention, that was a goal of ours from day one. Uh, when I wrote the plan, I wanted the Breakfast Club to be synonymous with the city of Houston, meaning when you say I'm going to Houston, you would hear somebody say you got to stop by the breakfast club. Or if you say I just came from Houston, they would ask you, uh, hey, 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 did you did you go by the breakfast club? I remember one day a buddy of mine, this was probably about year two or three, a buddy of mine had um, 
had checked. He went out of town. He checked into a hotel. I think he was in uh, D.C. And he called me from the hotel. He said, man, you're not going to believe this. He said, I'm standing in a ho- hotel in D.C. I'm checking in. And the lady looks at my driver's license and said, you from Houston? Have you been to the Breakfast Club? And he just thought that was fascinating. Mm. Uh, but it, And I was fascinated. I was excited because it meant that we were fulfilling our goal. Our intention uh, was being met. And when I say, again, when I say intention, we intended to be known. I wanted this single shop on the corner of Alabama and Travis to be known from the Pacific to the Atlantic. I know today that sounds like, oh, that's not a big deal. But in 2001, when your best form of advertising is sl- snail mail or uh, with, you know, you we're still doing dial up in, in 2001, right? It's still do, 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 do. AOL. It, that was still happening when, when we opened the doors. So we, it was a lot of grassroots uh, guerrilla marketing, a lot of hand to hand combat uh, that 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 got us to the point um of being recognized, but but to boil it down, pun in, pun intended, to boil it down, uh, I knew that beyond anything else, uh, what would get our name out and what would get us known is what we had to deliver, right? What we were going to deliver, the quality product, the quality service, and the level of consistency that we provided is what I expected to speak volumes. So because we didn't have a, a Facebook page and because we didn't have an Instagram page, um, uh, I, I had to rely on the number one form of, map, uh, of marketing then and today, which is word of mouth. And my message to my team was that as we fill these seats, if we give them uh, a quality product, if we give them great service, then they will go out and 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 they'll spread our name across the land. And, you know, it, it was a. Uh, I tell you a funny story about one one of the one of the ways that we were able to get national attention uh, because we didn't have the mechanism that that we have today. Um, we uh, you remember uh, Tom John the Morning Show, right? Which was one of yeah. the most popular uh, radio shows back in the day. And I was like, man, how can I how can I get on the Tom John the Morning Show? Well, we started on a shoestring budget, right? Everything from our construction to the staff we wanted to hire uh, to the marketing plan had to take a big hit because uh, the our startup cost, our startup budget was 10% of what we desired in, in the business plan. And so I was thinking, how can I get on the Tom Jordan morning show? Because that's the only way I'm going to get known across the nation. And I was like, well, I don't have the money to go buy Tom Jordan commercials. That's That's out of the question. Right. And at the time, Tom Jonah was still doing uh, what they call the Sky Show. I don't know if y'all remember that, right? And he would travel to different cities and do a live show. Now, the show ran across the country. He traveled to the city and he did the show live. When I found out it was coming to Houston, I said, that's it. I got to find a way to get my name mentioned on that program when they come to the city of Houston. So this is what we did. I couldn't tag him on IG. I couldn't tag him on, on Facebook. Uh, I couldn't inbox them and say, when you come to the city, come through. Uh, I couldn't trend. So I had to be creative. And so they 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 rented out one of the coliseums, one of the uh, 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 the event venues downtown. And I told my wife that we were going to buy 102 yellow T-shirts. That was the dial on the radio station, right? 102 mm. shirts. They were neon yellow. They were yellow as this cla- cap on this on this uh, season back here. Mm. And our logo on there. And I got up. We got up, my wife and I got up at four o'clock in the morning and we went out there and we passed out 102 yellow shirts. And we told everybody to put the shirt on, wear the shirt on the inside. If I see you on the inside, then you get a free breakfast for me. It cost me 102 breakfasts. But by the time that show was over, once you were in there, if you looked around the arena, you saw. And now it's it's, it's, it's 5000 people now. But for certain, one constant, one consistent was the 102 specks of bright yellow throughout that venue. And then even more important, when they came when they came back to the restaurant, they all lined up uh, to get in to get the free grits that I, that I had promised. And that led to uh, one of the DJs mentioning these folks in the yellow shirt. It led to uh, one of them coming back to the restaurant. Next thing you know, bam, he's talking about the great fried chicken that he ate uh, once he got to the radio. And that's why I say that's why I say quality product, quality service and consistency is important. Because had we done all of that to get him inside the store and we did deliver once he got here, then it would have been all for, for, for not. So uh, uh, it, it's incredibly important to understand how how important it is to be able to. OK, y'all know I like movies, right? Of course. <laughs> so I did prepare a movie 
for, okay. for, for this, right? <laughs> right. Okay, let's go. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite quotes in in, in Brandon is, is is Denzel Washington mm-hmm. in, in in the movie American Gangster, right? You remember you said Brandon, it's a brand name. I, you know, it's like Pepsi, it's a brand name. I stand behind it. They know me. I mean, they know the product, even if they don't know me, right? And I stand mm-hmm. behind it. And what he was saying was he stood behind it. And when people got that package, they expected the quality of product, the quality of service, and the consistency. So, you know, that that's that's how we've been able to do this over the last 20 years, uh, being, being a place of great quality, uh, of consistency, and, uh, you know, great service. Hmm. Come on now. <laughs> Marcus, one of, one of my favorite things that you, one of my favorite words that I hear you say often is you started with a plan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Like I, I, I really yeah. admire and respect that. If someone is starting today looking to set up something similar, whether it be in the hospitality industry or even online, what are some things that you would recommend or suggest they make a part of their plan? Well, let me let me let me start, because to, to make a part of the plan, I think w- w- it, it may be a tad presumptuous considering the fact that, you know, entrepreneurship is way more uh, popular and accepted today than it was 20 years ago. Right. You know, I was an alien in 1999 when I decided I'm going to leave my job and step out and, and, and quote unquote, do, you know, be an entrepreneur, uh, do my own thing, as we used to say. Uh, so it, 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 the the. But in the in this new era where uh, entrepreneurship is 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 heavily sought after and people want to participate in it, uh, and in this era of quick, fast, and 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 in a hurry, and I have all these things uh, uh, accessible to me, uh, a plan may be may be an afterthought. So I, I don't want to presume that that they're going to do that. And so the first thing I would I would say before uh, um, telling what should be in the plan. I, I would have to say you got to make sure that you create the plan. I even saw this clip one time that that went viral, and I understood the intent. I understood the intent uh, that went viral that said, uh, "Even if you don't have a plan, just get started. Just get started." And mm. I understood the intent, but I cringed behind it. I cringed because I thought that it would lead too many people astray from the importance of creating a plan. What's my man named uh, Will Smith in, in, in the movie, uh, Venus and Serena Daddy? He, he would constantly say, hey, I wrote the plan. I yeah. wrote the plan. I wrote the plan so I know how this is supposed to go. Uh, and that's the importance of the plan. You knowing, having an idea of how it's supposed to go. It doesn't mean it's going to always go that way. It doesn't mean it's not going to change. It doesn't mean you're not going to have to scratch out or erase or make adjustments or make amendments. It just means you have a framework from which to work. Now, what 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 should be in that plan? Uh, you know, start with you know your vision. What is what is it that I'm that I'm trying to create, and and what do I see? What's in my head? Uh, I equate creating a business plan to breathing life into your dream. When you when you sit down and put pen to paper uh, to write out your plan, and you bringing it from your head to your hand to that paper, then you are breathing a breath of life into that plan. And you have to include in that, what is it that I'm trying to accomplish? Where do I want to go? What do I see in my head? The vision statement is incredibly important. A lot of other important stuff, but, you know, yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it, start, it, start, it starts with vision. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So it's called The Breakfast Club. Yeah. Can't, can't leave out the. Right, right. Can't, can't spell club the regular club way. Right, right. So talk to us. How'd you come up with that name? Yeah. How'd you come up with the two instinct, the the and the K? Like, right. talk to us about that process of naming your brand. Look, and 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 I'm 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 adamant about it, about our name. I'm adamant about it being the Breakfast Club. Uh I, I, I tell people that when you are naming something, there's something that, this is how I see it. When you're naming something, there's something spiritual that comes with that, right? You are taking uh, what the creator has placed in your head and in your heart and you're bringing it into the universe. And the name that comes along with it uh, uh, is, is, is something spiritual. It means something to me. Um, I, I, and I, and I, I, I say that for, you know, brand names. I say that for people's, uh, you know, the best way I can get people to understand it is I had a young lady who um, she was interviewing. Her name was 
her name was difficult to pronounce, according to her. And I asked her what was her name, and she told me. And she said, "Well, you can call me. And let's say her name was Ajane, and she, you just call me AJ. No, I want to call you what your mother and your father labored over while you were in your mother's belly. While you, before you had yet hit this earth, they thought about this, and they gave a lot of thought to it. She laid her head on that pillow, thinking about what did she want to call this being uh, she was bringing into the universe. And so it's important that we uh, appreciate uh, what that mother thought about, what that father." Uh, thought about and 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 take uh, with high regard the name that was assigned. And that's the way people ought to think about their brand, their name, right? This is something that was given to me, that came to me in a dream, in an aha moment, in an epiphany. Whatever way the creator, you know, gave you that aha moment, uh, that's how you should treat your brand uh, in, in, in representation, uh, in, in, in putting it out there in representation and in, in protection. Hmm. But 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 wait! I don't. You, you, so you asked how did how did it, how did it come about? Um, yeah. it's the, that was the too good. Concept. I was gonna I was gonna leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> so so look, the concept of 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 the Breakfast Club uh, was we wanted uh, to create a party in the morning, right? We wanted to create. So a few f- friends of mine and I, I, I think I shared the story with you guys. We were riding around one night and we hit up a couple of spots and. It, as we hit those spots at the end of the night, we started talking about where we wanted to go after that. And as we talked about it, um, the places that we went afterwards didn't match. So normally, you know, when you're hanging out at night, you go to the bars, you go hang out. At the end of the night, you go somewhere to get breakfast, right? Right. And the places that we ended up going to, they were normally light bright, right? The lights are real bright. Uh, they're ice cold. The music is whack. And I was like, man, it'd be great if we created a breakfast joint that was seamless, that fit into the places that we've been going to all night. Even more important, it'd be great if we could provide that atmosphere, get people in a party mood, in a festive mood, uh, in a vibrant mood in the morning as they got themselves uh, ready to go to work. You know, I, 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 that, that, that part about how you start your day was incredibly important. So I wanted folks to have a, ha, to have a good time. The club part was about being inclu- being, being inclusive for everyone. It, it was about uh, mm-hmm. making sure that any and everybody that wanted to participate in what we're doing on the corner of Alabama and Travis, that they had the opportunity to participate. That 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 uh, caused me some strife and some headache when I was looking for funding from 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 banks, and they were like, "Well, who's your target audience? Who's your target demographic?" And I refused to give them one. I told them I don't have a target audience. I don't have a target demographic. I said I'm trying to open this space for any and everybody that wants to participate, which went against the grain of traditional thinking when trying to start a business. They wanted you to identify uh, that 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 you were trying to uh, reach to reach a mother who had 2.3 kids and had a hundred thousand dollar household income, and that's not what I wanted to create. I wanted to create a place that any and everybody that wanted to participate could, in fact, participate. We wanted to open the club up to anybody that wanted to be a member. And so uh, that's 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 how it was about breakfast. It, it was about everybody being involved. And that's how the name The Breakfast Club came about. And, you know, of course, the the, the article T.H.E. was just about it, you know, making a statement. We, we we don't just we don't just serve breakfast. We don't just do breakfast. Uh, breakfast is who we are. We are the breakfast club. We're not just some some place that serves breakfast. We're not just some place that serves waffles and, and, and grits. We are the breakfast spot. And and I heard you say the best restaurant in Houston. I take that. I receive that. We are, but we are still the best breakfast restaurant across the nation. Hands yep. down. And, and I'm, I'm going to put these hands up for anybody who want to challenge. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. I'm not going to dispute that. I promise you. I'm not going to dispute that at all. I love it. I love it. Marcus, I mean, the 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 marketing, the branding, your yeah. vision for the restaurant is incredible. But I love the principles that you laid out for your team to help sustain this great promise that you are making to the, par- the, yeah. the marketplace. Right. Like there's there's specific principles that you laid out for them. I love when you share when we were visiting the spot. Share those with us here and, and give a little backstory on how they came to be. Well, the, the, the first one I, I, I gave already, which is quality product, quality service and consistency and how I came up with those things. I spent 10 years working in corporate uh, with another food concept 
And so I got my 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 my, my training and operations uh, doing that from the time I was 15. You asked how to start it. I started working in fast food when I was 15 years old, uh, you know, serving fries, burgers, working cash register, team leader, night manager, uh, shift manager, day manager, uh, then climbing all the way to uh, being working with the corporate office. And so I, I had I had done that over over 10 years from the time I was 15 to the time I was 26. And then I went and did it for them. I was a troubleshooter, uh, taking stores that were in terrible shape uh, that needed a little uh, TLC uh, and fixing them up for the company for another for uh, a franchisee to come in and take them over. And that was my specialty going in and, and being a change agent, uh, taking stores that weren't performing and making them uh, top performing stores. And so. Uh, when I when I when I left and came back home to Houston to open the breakfast club, to open a restaurant, I wanted to feel voids looking for what is it that our community needs? What is it that they yearn for? What is it that I can bring? And those three things came up. I, 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 I heard from the marketplace that, you know, quality is is an issue. I heard from the marketplace that that. Uh, 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 service was an issue, and I heard from the marketplace uh, that consistency uh, was, was an issue. And I heard it through, uh, uh, you know, listening to, to customers that were in spaces I was going to. I heard it from myself as a place that, that you know, as a person that went out to eat. Uh, and and I heard these cries and these calls, and I wanted to answer, them, making sure that you don't compromise on quality, you don't compromise on service. And those two things are so important that you have to do them every single time you unlock your door. And when you do that, uh, then that is your brand, right? That that right there is your brand. Your name is your, but your brand is what you do. Your name is what is assigned to what you do, but your brand is what you do. And I can I can have the best content. Oh, I, can I quote Denzel again? <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. Denzel said. Denzel said. Uh, this was this was this was in, a, in 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 an interview. But Denzel said. Uh, he said. He said. Being a great. He was talking about acting, but you can apply this to to business. He said, being a great actor is not about how many likes you get. It's about the content that you present. It's about the. Sh- they want to know the last movie you were in and how great you were in it. So while we may have. X amount of thousands of fi- uh, followers on Instagram, while we may have X amount of thousands of followers on Facebook and on Twitter and people who come as a result, if we don't deliver who we are and what we say we are, then we've misrepresented the brand. We've misrepresented uh, what we told the people that they were going to get. So it, it goes beyond the likes. It goes into the experience that people have once they encounter your business and your brand. Mm. Man, I'm getting that, that, horns for day. Listen, <laughs> listen, every every time, every every time, because sheesh. Um, so I I love what you said because you even pointed out like these are the things that is missing in the market, right? Right. And so you clearly stand out. And hence why you are top tier as you are. Now, besides those three, right? Now, let's talk about even the physical locations. Of course, the the airport situation, which I said, side note, I wasn't going to have it until I went to the to the main spot. To the street side store, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I saw it and I was hungry when I got to. (laughs) Let me tell you, I was starved and I was like, no. I never had it, so it only is right that I go. So that's just a quick side note. But besides those three, what else, what other kind of research or how much research did you do as far as the other restaurants and the other breakfast spots? And how did you find the gap and applied it immediately? Uh, Man, uh, through, well, through through research uh, is one, uh, and when I say research, I'm talking you know uh, days, weeks, months. Um, so a little backdrop when I when I when I had this idea when I was that night I told you about uh, after I had that idea, uh, I went back and started working on the plan. Uh, and after I worked on the plan, uh, I found a, a home for 
the, the this idea that I had. I was fumbling through. I was I was I was teaching school. I was a sixth and eighth grade uh, 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 history teacher. I was coaching seventh and eighth grade boys basketball. That was my hiatus from restaurant after I left left the corporate gig. Uh, but I still had that entrepreneurial bug in me that I had to uh, I had to get out of me. I had to activate uh, and I still had the desire to be in hospitality, still had the desire to be in the food business. But um, I had set it to the side. And uh, one day I was I was dabbling in real estate. The entrepreneur in me was dabbling in real estate while I was um, while I was teaching school. And I f- came across a uh, an ad for a building that had been like a convenience store bakery. And uh, I called on them about the real estate, but ended up finding a home for this dream, for this idea that I had called The Breakfast Club. And so um, the, 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 that, that's how we selected the, 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 the location. And when I, when I got here, I realized that this area of town, which was in, at, the, at the early stages of transition uh, in, in the midtown, downtown Houston, uh, when I got here, I, I, I looked and saw that yeah, there's not a lot of breakfast uh, uh, being served in this area. But more importantly, um, I found that the concept of breakfast that I was trying to bring to this marketplace was not being uh, uh, was not being served in Houston. Look, in 1999, 2001, when we opened these doors, you couldn't find a fish, a grit, a chicken, all waffle on nobody's breakfast menu in the city of Houston. Um, you couldn't find it. You couldn't find it on nobody's menu for breakfast across the country. Uh, there were some people that sold one dish. Right, of fish and uh, you know wings and waffles or chicken and waffles. There are some people that may may have sold fish and grits, uh, but you you couldn't find them on one menu. You couldn't find them on one menu uh, at seven or eight o'clock in the morning for breakfast, and you couldn't find them combined with a uh, a caramel macchiato or a white raspberry mocha, and that and that was important because the void we were trying to fill was uh, combining a coffee shop with a restaurant with a breakfast restaurant. Mm. Why was that an anomaly? Well, you remember in the 90s, America agreed uh, that we would all pay four or five bucks for a cup of coffee. Y'all remember we took a vote. We said, yes, we're going to all pay four or five bucks for a cup of coffee. It's time. And so you had all of these coffee houses that popped up across the country. Well, they didn't serve food. Right. The majority of them in the late 90s and the early 2000s, 99 and 2000s. I'm, dro- I'm dropping these hip hop uh, uh Thanks. I see you. I see the bars. I see the bars. <laughs> in, in the 99, 2000, you know, you, you, they, they, the coffee houses were there, but they didn't serve food. And the breakfast restaurants that were there, uh, they sold lousy coffee. They didn't really focus on, on coffee. So uh, the, 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 the goal that we wanted to fulfill, the, 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 the niche that we wanted to fill was we wanted to bring those two things together. We wanted you to be able to get a great plate. Uh, with uh, pork chops and grits, uh, and we wanted you to be able to get that caramel macchiato uh, at, at the same time in, in the same space. So uh, the immediate area didn't have the breakfast restaurant. Uh, the city of Houston didn't have the type of breakfast that I wanted to serve. Uh, the vibe was missing. I wanted you walking in and hearing John Coltrane and seeing uh, beautiful works of art uh, around the restaurant. And at, at, that's how I wanted you to start your day at seven o'clock in the morning or eight o'clock in the morning or whatever time you came in there before you went to work. That's that was the goal to put you in a certain space uh, as you started your day. I hope y'all so, writing look, these notes down. I hope yeah, you're writing these good. notes. This is good, Marcus, and I and, and I have an advantage because I I heard parts of the story, so it it's yeah. it's 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 a, a unique advantage for me, but. It starts rolling, right? Let's let's skip to that part where the idea is now rolling. It's growing. Yeah. You got on today, and we we're like, "Hey, what's what's that behind you?" And we're like, "Oh, it, the Breakfast Club product line." Mm. And there's that right. scale process that came to it. In addition to opening other restaurants and sister restaurants, there are also, you know, what Nikki mentioned, uh, uh, having another breakfast club at the airport. Talk about this operation to scale division to multiple locations, multiple concepts, and even this product line. What did it take to scale the the business there? Uh, First and foremost is people. Uh, Surrounding yourself Mm -hmm. with with great people. Surrounding yourself with people that, uh, that, that are willing and have the ability to do the work uh, that that is necessary. Uh, And then systems, putting systems in place 
that will allow you to be consistent, that will allow you to be uh, strategic, that will allow you to be. Uh, look, when I, we we opened the Breakfast Club in 2001, about five years later, uh, we opened a Caribbean restaurant. About five years after that, we opened uh, uh, a bar called the Alicat Bar and Lounge. Then after that, we opened a restaurant downtown called Culture. Right now, the, these are these are four different concepts, uh, four different names, but. Mm-hmm. But the, the one commonality was when people went from one place to the, to the next, because it was part of our brand, their expectation was the same. So mm. uh, putting things in place, putting systems in place that, that, that allow that quality of product, that allow that quality of service, that allow that consistency has to run across the board. We couldn't do it at one place and then have our brand attached to another concept and not do it at that place and have it attached to another concept and not do it at that place. People are coming to that place because they heard you were attached to it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what did Denzel say? <laughs> I stand behind and they're going to come. They're going to come whether they know me or not, whether they met me or not. They just understand that it's affiliated with this other place that's known for doing these great things. And so putting systems in place and having people around you uh, that will implement those systems uh, and teach those systems and, and, and make sure that the brand is protected, that the brand is promoted and that it is given the utmost attention. Is I think that's that's the importance uh, for scale, because if you if you don't do those things, if you don't do those things, then you're Nikki Barnes. Right. You're watering the brand down. You're cutting it. You're slicing it. You're dicing it. And that's just not that. that that's not that's not OK. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when I say that, what, 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 I, what I mean is and, and I know when you when you get into business and if you're an entrepreneur, you want to do. Uh, a, a, a little bit of everything. You want to hop here, you want to hop there, and a lot of windows uh, of opportunity open up. And you got to be very, very careful with that, right? You got to be very careful with uh, whose who's, who's name you, uh, you, you, you know, who you hit your wagon to, uh, who you, uh, what events you're affiliated with, uh, what you get involved in. Like, you know, I've been approached by a lot of things. And you know, some of them, I just like, you know what, I, I appreciate what you do. I'm wishing you the best success, but that just doesn't fit into who we are and what we're about. And the danger is wanting uh, success so bad that you don't pay attention to the red lights or to the red flags that are that that, that are tied to that. Hmm. That's a good word. That's, yeah, that's good. That that one, one more time. <laughs> one more time. I just- just, it needed a proper closing. Um, okay, I'm going to go a little off track. Um, no, come on. Come on. I'm here. From my normal branding talk. But what is some advice that you were seeking for when trying to grow your business and your brand that no one gave you that you are now intentional mm. telling other people now? So, um, probably about, I don't know, I, it, within about five or six years, I started to realize, okay, we are no longer uh, just that, 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 that mom and pop shop on the corner of Alabama and Travis. Mm. Uh, we are no longer just, um, you know, just, just a breakfast joint, uh, one restaurant. Uh, even if we were just one restaurant, we're no longer just that thing. We are now a growing company right we are now a growing company and i had to recognize my role my role as the ceo of this new growing company and so the the advice that i sought out was you know how to how to grow that company um how to build it how to sustain it um one of the things that i that i was very very curious about because I, I believe that we would be in business for quite some time. And I believe that if we were going to be in business for uh, a long period of time, I had to know what to do when the poop hit the fan. Right. Mm. I had to know how to respond when, uh, you know, what's on, what's in the plan 
ain't happening, right? Or when 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 the plan that I wrote down, the wind come and blow it away, or or it gets sucked up by the flood, or or if if the hurricane comes through and blows it away, you got to know how to how to respond uh, during those times. So the the advice that I couldn't get from someone that I was seeking was how and I this was something that was I, I, I shared this recently. This was something I was very fascinated about. I would read Black Enterprise. I would read the business section of the of, of the 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 Houston Chronicle or the, the newspapers. And as I would read them, I would read all about the success stories. Mm-hmm. But then I became I became fascinated with stories of uh, the downward spiral of companies and who was at the helm at the time and how did they respond or CEOs who brought their companies back from the brink of disaster. So I became extremely fascinated with CEOs and leaders who were called in after a company has gone through hell and high water. And who was that guy that they call that later they call to bring that company back and put it back into its proper place and to uh, catapult it into the next the next uh, uh, hemisphere. And if I could use a sports analogy, um, I, I like Phil Jackson, who mm-hmm. has the ability to run a team with a Michael Jordan and a Scottie Pippen uh, or a Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, uh, and, and Shaquille O'Neal. But uh, Bill Parcells was a was a guy who could take a one in 15 team and turn them into a 15 and one team. Mm. Right. And if you're going to grow a company, if you're going to build a company, if you're going to sustain a company, having the ability to bring to hold on to you to, to the rope and to bring your company back when Hurricane Ike hits or to bring your company back when Hurricane uh, 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 Rita or Katrina uh, hits or to bring your company back when the recession occurs or to bring your company. We've been battle tested. Uh, mm. That's one of the things that I talk about. In our 20th year, we've been we the pandemic was the pandemic, but it wasn't our first go round. Right. We have, we've been battle tested over the last 20 years. We started this business under a tropical storm, Allison. We moved into the the, the we opened two weeks after uh, um, uh, 9-11, uh, which was important because, you know, we did, we didn't know what was going on. And I was like, hey, I'm opening a restaurant. Right after 9-11. Right. And mm. we, you know, we're running around here, not sure how the world's going to function on, on, on tomorrow. Then after that, the, 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 the Enron debacle, then the gas prices. And then you, after the gas price, you have the housing market crash. Then after the housing market crash, then we got hit with another hurricane and then so on and so forth. And then in 2020 was the biggest of them all, uh, the pandemic. Right. And I remember, as you asked, I remember asking, calling one of my one of my mentors who has 50 years in business. I said, hey, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what to do. Hey, uh, wh- uh, what should I do? He said, hell, I don't know either. <laughs> I ain't never been to him. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. You the guy that I called. He's like, I'm not that damn old. Oh, <laughs> no. Dang. But, yes. but, but, but. But what I was and I, I'm coming full circle, I, I, I didn't give my disclaimer. I am the son, grandson, and great grandson of, of, of black Baptist preachers. So when you get a mic in front of me, I, you know, I, 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 I talk and I oh, go on and, on and on and on. And on. <laughs> but but, <laughs> but the, 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 the thing that, that I learned the most is being prepared and using past experiences for the next experience. Right. Using the things that you've been through to strengthen yourself better yourself for tomorrow because if it came once guaranteed it's likely to come again right Mm. and if you get hit the same way the next time that's on you right i I couldn't i couldn't control the first hurricane but if the second hurricane that came through i was equally unprepared as the next one that's on me and so the lesson that i learned uh was hey man strengthen your books because uh, when when the disaster relief comes, you need to be able to press a button and have your C- CPA uh, send all the information that's already ready. Uh, strengthen your 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 uh, insurance package, right? Making sure that you we were we had some insurance, but I didn't have insurance insurance, right? So I, was, I, I the lesson I learned from that was I mean I need to be better insured. And I worked as a goal to make sure that my company was properly insured. And when we got the insurance coverage, that, that I, I man, I boy, you just swore I was driving a Bentley, right? Because I was like, yeah, buddy, <laughs> we got that, we got that Bentley insurance because it was important. Because I knew that in the cycle of a business, you were going to experience some things where you had to rely on that. 
So th the lessons that I learned that I preach is, is your level of preparation, having your insurance on par, having your finances in order and, you know, having your, your, your numbers, your CPA ready. But here, here's the other one. I, I, had a, I had a guy tell me one day, he was, uh, uh, he was a customer, a successful business person. He came regular and he said, I see you're doing well. He said, but I'm going to know you're taking your business seriously when you take your, 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 uh, your numbers and your legal seriously. I was like, dude, you just slapped me in the face. I got people out the door around the corner. I got line. I got, you know, I've been, I've been on, you know, this TV show. I've been on that TV show. And you come telling me about some, some accounting and some, some, <laughs> yeah, some legal liability. But he was right, right? He, he, he was, he was absolutely right. And when it, going so that that last one about legal is making sure that you have the proper representation because it doesn't matter how great your insurance policy is. What I learned is that I have to have my attorney, my attorney on retainer so he can go fight them for the money that they're supposed to give me that they're telling me that they're not going to give me. Mm. Mm. And so how has that benefited us? We've been through Hurricane Hike. We've been through Hurricane Harvey. We've been through a pandemic. We've been through an ice storm. We've been through those things for a person that's leading the company. Those things become super important. So as you grow as a CEO, as the leader of your company, the things that you dealt with on day one aren't the things you're going to deal with on day 10. The things you deal with on day 10, you aren't going to be dealing with on day 100 or day 1000. If you are, there may, there may be a problem, right? There may be a problem. I say may because it, it, you, you've got to grow into other areas. It doesn't mean like today I, I did my walkthrough. I did a check on the grits. I did a check on the green beans, but I'm not stirring grits and green beans every day. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's just something that I that I that I go back to just just to stay in in in, in touch with uh, that level. But it's also uh, not lost on me that I have to be in my office doing deals, right? I've got to be in here working on the business of the restaurant and not just the restaurant itself, which is which is a challenge, right? People making sure that they understand whatever your business is. That's one thing. Right. The restaurant, is, the breakfast club is the breakfast club. The restaurant is the restaurant. The business of the restaurant is something completely different. How to get your grits out to you on time at the right temperature with the right taste and the right texture is one thing. How to deal with suppliers is a whole nother thing. How to deal with all the other stuff of the business. That's a whole nother world. And so I would encourage any entrepreneurs that are out there, you know, I know it's I know it's fancy looking on, you know, seeing the ticks and the talks and seeing, uh, you know, all the, the lovely things. Yeah, I'm 50. Come on. Now. Give me a break. <laughs> I love it. Seeing that, seeing that talkity tick and that tickety talk. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I'm like, okay. I tried. I tried. My mom was like, oh, no, I did that. Yeah, went, oh. I, I did that on purpose. Yeah, seeing the ticks like, and the yeah, talks. Went, right? Oh, it's the but tick of the talk. <laughs> the ticks and the talks, right? You have to understand that there's a business that you're participating in and that you've got to tend to that business because you can blow up. But if you're not tending to that business, to the business of your business, then you will, in fact, blow up. Mm. Mm. Ten, ten yeah. to the business of your business. I love that. Yeah. You know, Marcus, uh, I, I, I appreciate success, but I really admire integrity. And I think you're, you're definitely a man of integrity because of how much you look out for your community. And I feel like you've almost made the two one. Right? Like you've dealt with them separately, but you're big on this concept of community with, you know, acquiring a restaurant that was going out of business one time and, and making sure it stays there. Talk to us about why community holds such a high place in your heart. Um, so it, it 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 goes back to uh, the, the the definition of entrepreneurship. Right. Filling the void in the marketplace of the marketplace is calling for conscious or subconscious. Um. I, I, I posted the other day about how how uh, entrepreneurs are artists, right? We're, we're artists, we're creators, and uh, the universe was given to us by the creator on which to paint. That's that's what we do, and we paint what the world wants to see, what they want to hear, what they want to taste, what they want to touch. That's what entrepreneurs do. We bring into existence that which does not exist. For what reason? For the rest of the universe. Right. And the rest of the universe includes the community around you. The, the, the word entrepreneur from the get go really didn't have anything to do with P&L statements. 
right? It didn't have to have anything to do with 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 business per se. The the etymology of the word entrepreneur it had to do with identifying a challenge in the community and being willing to undertake that challenge. Being able to the community has an issue. Okay, I'm going to take it on. Right. That's the role of the responsibility, seeing what the community needs and being willing to step up and say, I got this one. And then the response, I call it, 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 it it's a call and response relationship between the entrepreneur and the community. Right. The, the, everybody in the community has has a void. You, the entrepreneur and the community, that, there's a void. The entrepreneur steps up and says, I'm going to feel it. The response of the community is to say, OK, we will support it. And as the community supports it, it is then the entrepreneur's responsibility to say, "Okay, now that you've got my back on this, I've got to go and fill other voids in the community with the resources that you have given to me. Right. And if that means I've got to make sure that the low league uh, uh, program down the street is taken care of, that that the elementary school up the street is taken care of, that we sponsor the debate team or the communications program at the high school up the street or the the basketball or what have you. Right. Those resources that the community entrusts you with, you are now responsible for being a good steward with those resources and delivering to that community what they so desperately needs need needs. And in the African-American community, uh, that is how we lift the foot of oppression off of our neck. Right. It is through uh, it's through business. It's through economics. It's through that call and response of the entrepreneur and, and the community. So that's why I think it's. It, it's it's incredibly important because I, I'm a I'm a believer I'm biased because I, because I am a businessman but I'm a believer that you, you, this this relationship that I'm describing is what cures the ills of the community whether it's the educational ills I can give as many scholarships as, as my wife uh, I'm pointing at it because she's sitting over there <laughs> I can give as many scholarships as my wife allows me to based on. Uh, the support of the community. So where, bam, we've touched on education. I can uh, support whatever candidate that I believe is going to do right by who's going to get the potholes fixed, who's going to make sure the after school programs are there, who's going to make sure uh, that that we have some social programs uh, for the community. I can support that candidate based on what the community gives us. Right. So that's why I believe it's important that it's important to pay attention to building community as as an entrepreneur. I, just quite frankly, I, I think that's the whole purpose. That's I think that's the whole responsibility. I, I, I don't believe that we are given uh, visions and dreams and goals for us. They're to come through us. They come to us, but they're to come to us through us. That's, is that a bar? Can I can I make that's that a, a bar? That's, that's a bar. bar. That's, that's a bar. Actually, let's let's, let's do this one. Let's wait, let's, let's, see, all, let's see. Let me see if I can get. Like some. you didn't just say what you just said. <laughs> mm-mm, mm-mm. That was good. That was good. Well, and look, and look, I, I, and 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 it, it, it goes back to to, to purpose, right? It. Um, I was talking. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. I I, I hope. Well, I, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. And she was telling me what she was working on. And I've been knowing her for quite some time. She's supportive in in in, in the business. And uh, uh, and so we, we we we're creative sounding boards. Right. And so I was talking to her about a project she was working on. And I asked her why. And I asked her why again. I asked her why. And I and I told her, I said, you know, I know you and I've been knowing you for a while, but I'm not hearing what I think the, it, the, it should be about. And she was like, what do you mean? So. Fast forward later in the conversation, she talked about something that she had been working on that she sat to the side that and as she said it, she just started spitting it out. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about. I was like, you're passionate about this particular issue. This is a purpose. This is purpose driven. I was like, before you were talking about money and that that's not that's 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 not the motivation. The motivation should be what purpose am I feeling? Right. The motivation should be how am I making the world a better place? The motivation should be how am I helping make those that are on whole whole? The motivation should be how am I helping to heal those that are that, that, that are sick? Uh, and that's part of the design of the universe. Right. That's part of what we're here for. Trees were placed here to give off the thing we inhale, which is oxygen. Right. Trees don't use the oxygen. We do. But they're responsible for putting it out. Bees don't eat the food that comes from the pollination that they practice. We do. 
So similarly, we as human beings, as members of this creation, as members of this universe, have responsibility to contribute and deliver just like every other being has their role in society. Mm. Mm. Yeah, okay. All right. I don't, I don't know how I'm supposed to follow up after that, but okay. I'll try. Uh, it will be my last question because I'm not trying to really follow up after that. Um, okay. It's your show. Y'all can do whatever you want to. Listen, listen. <laughs> The the success of the restaurant and the different the, the, what you've built as a brand, the multiple restaurants, the the just the relationships and everything that you've built is out of this world. However, not in a negative way, you have become a brand. You yourself, Marcus, right? Right. Talk to us about. Was that always the plan? How do you go about it now? Because I know I've hit you like we got to talk and then I had COVID and I couldn't talk. But um, (laughs) that's a whole nother story. makes me scared of Houston, but it is what it is. But um, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. We'll we'll get over it. Don't be. I need those grits again. So it's not. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. yeah, It's not. These are healing healing grits. I'm telling you. Listen, I will. I shall get healed. Then I shall. <laughs> but talk to us about you growing as a brand. Like clearly, you know, the traffic is brought by the restaurant, but now you can bring traffic to it as well because now they're connecting with the person. They're connecting with the owner, and you yourself is beyond dope. Once people really like see you, they're like, "Oh wait, this is this is who owns it." Oh, I need to get to know more about him. Like that's why we got you here because it's like it's not just about the restaurant; it's about you and your family, and like your wife is amazing, and you two are like doing it together. So, ex- explain to the people like the transition of you being the brand, and was that always the plan? Uh no. Well. No, it, the, the the plan was not for you know Marcus Davis to be the brand. I, I want the I want the brand to be itself, right? But I I am aware, uh, you know, kind of what I was just saying. I am aware of who I am and what I've been called to do, uh, and I am aware of the gift uh, and the skill set that 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 the creator has, has put in me. Um, I am I am I am first and foremost Jerry and Betty Davis' son, and I am the son of two educators. And so there is a teacher uh, that is that is in me that will always be in me. And as passionate as I am about teaching, I'm equally as passionate about entrepreneurship. And you bring those two things together. And that's what led to, uh, you know, me uh, talking and, and sharing my story. And because I don't want folks to, to go to their gravesite with their dreams uh, locked in their hearts. I, I, I am hopeful that they will. Uh, get that key and they will unlock it and they will live life uh, to, to, to the fullest. And me being passionate about that and speaking on that has led to, uh, you know, people wanting to hear what I have to say and people, look, I, I, you know, I, I can't tell you that I, you know, having, having, well, you mentioned it before, both of y'all mentioned before, but having someone like E, you know, I, 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 I said, I'll share it again, you know, for me to get a text saying, hey, I want to bring my squad and I want you to teach on what you think is important in the area of quality. I mean, of excellence. And I had to look at my phone again. I was like, did did I just get the text from the number one motivation speaker in the world asking? And 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 that's the, why is that important? Because to have someone of that caliber on that level, me knowing, having followed uh, uh, the movement to be trusted with that audience was like, wow. You, does that make sense? That's like, yep. yeah. It, to, to be trusted with that is, is j- just, uh, I don't, it's, you know, I don't have words for it because it, it's, 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 it's a, something of value when someone says that I believe that you have something that I can trust, uh, you to deliver, to my crew. And so 
um, I'm, 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 I'm grateful for that, for that connection. I'm grateful for, for the relationship. And that's how Marcus, as you stated, the, the, the brand, uh, has, is growing because people keep saying, Hey, we need to hear more of you. Yes. So I'm an entrepreneur. I want to fill voids. And the more people tell me that they want to hear more, then I've got to keep giving more. Yes. So mm-hmm. as soon as, as soon as, uh, you know, Nikki put me down on the team and, you know, and, and, and helped me to, to. <laughs> About to happen. About to happen. You know what I mean? I, I, I reached out. I reached I'm just, out. I'm just, so I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, but I, 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 I hope, I hope I answer your question. You know, my goal is just to fulfill the purpose that I'm put here for. And if that's to uh, help build Wakanda one grid at a time, which is our slogan at TBK, if that's to help others to unlock the potential that's that that that's inside of them is if that's to um, you know help them to to believe in something that they didn't believe was possible. Hey, I'll 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 end on this. I don't know if this goes to your question or not. Right? When I came to realize that the Breakfast Club was more than just uh, yeah, this is where the transition came. Right? When the Breakfast Club was more than just um, a grit factory, uh, that took on new meaning. And it came through having people with terminal degrees, professionals, come to me and tell me, you inspired me to open my law practice. You inspired me to open my dentist's office or my doctor's office. I'm like, wait a minute, dude, I got hot butter grits. You, you know, you do something completely different. And what they were communicating was I had not been convinced that I could take that step. Right. Mm. And it was only through I won't say only through, but it was through. Uh, the grits and eggs that we serve, that they were able to gain the courage, the faith to do what they were supposed to be doing, to do what they wanted to do. So when I came to realize that the work that we do and the work that I, Marcus Davis, uh, that I do goes beyond just the breakfast club, goes beyond just the grits, uh, that's when that transition took place. I knew that I had a responsibility and obligation uh, to help folks walk through the fire of fear into the promised land of faith. And that's, that's when the transition uh, took place. I, look, I, I got this, I have this saying about, uh, you know, scripture, uh, unfortunately, uh, shines a bad light on this guy named Thomas, right? Okay. We call, we, we, they call him Doubting Thomas, right? Uh, and that's not how the story actually goes. The story was kind of like, he was like, I'm gonna have faith, but I need a little, I need a little shove. I need a little push, right? I need to be able to put my hand on something to help me to believe just a little bit more. And the reality of it is most of us have what I call Thomas faith, right? We can have faith, but if we touch something, it'll give us just a little bit of encouragement to go through with what it is that we're supposed to be doing. So the more and more people touch the walls of TBK, the corner of 3711 Travis, the more and more I go out and share the story of, 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 of you can, you must, you will. Right. <laughs> you like that? You like that? I see what you did there. I see, you see what, what you did I did there. there right? I see what you yeah. did there. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, then, then the more and more we have people who are living freely and living purposefully. Love it. Love it. That's amazing. Marcus, man, such a pleasure and honor. Thank you so much for joining us. I think this was a, a super inspiring and insightful conversation. This is our way of always uh, highlighting people. You know, I think the pandemic woke up a lot of us to this idea of, oh, we give people people their flowers while they're still here. And we're like, well, heck, this would be our way of doing it. So thank you for serving as both a role model and an example. I think it's been really awesome to hear your story and experience what you built in person. I think that was the cool thing about this conversation. We got to experience it first. And then we said, okay, hey, come come talk about it and share a little bit more about it as well. So this was been uh, this has been incredible, man. Thanks again for uh, for being here with us today. And th- thanks again for the invitation. I appreciate it. Appreciate it much. Mama, I made it. Oh, Come on, shish, Nikki. Shish. <laughs> so, so real quick before I, I, I make my little flower thing kind of situation, uh, tell the people where they can find you, where they could buy the products. Where's the, the, where's everything at? Okay. Where's everything mm-hmm. at first? So, uh, the restaurant is in Houston. You got to make your way to Houston. 3711 yeah. Travis, uh, at Alabama. 
uh, on on uh, line. We are at Catfish and Grits on Instagram and, uh, uh, and and on Twitter and the Breakfast Club, T H E Club with a K, on 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 Facebook. Uh, me personally, I'm Marcus Mosiah on on Instagram at Marcus Mosiah, and that's after the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, who was the ultra entrepreneur. Uh, you know, a hundred years ago, and man, don't even get me started on that dude. Bro. Cause that, when you talk about entrepreneurship, when you talk about visionary, when you talk about uh, a plan and 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 a purpose, yeah, you know, yeah, Marcus Mosiah Garvey was was yeah, yeah, he was more than a mouthful. But yeah, that's that's what Marcus Mosiah on on on, uh, on Instagram. And if they had to buy one thing from what oh, is yeah. behind you, if the, they have the one thing and then they'll buy five extra things. What is the first Man. thing they have to buy? Look, here, here's the one thing. And, 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 and CJ, CJ, CJ can testify to about it. But if there, if there's one thing, right. When people ask me, how you make your food taste so good. And what's the secret to your food? It's this, right. This is our all purpose seasoning. And the reason I say this is the thing, because this is the thing that we put on everything. We put it on our fish. We put it on our chicken. We put it on our pork chops. We put it on our potatoes. Uh, it is the foundation of all the flavor uh, in, in, in all the foods. So if, for those of you who, who got skills out there, anywhere that you would use, uh, you know, whatever your go to seasoning is, that one all purpose season, I'm not going to name them because I'm not going to give them. I'm not going to give them no They'll shine. Them no like, Toby did, That's like, right. like, Toby, That's right. like Toby did. That's right. Like Toby did. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, give, I give him a hard time behind it. But look, uh, anywhere that you, whatever your go to is, I promise you, 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 you replace it with this. Make sure you hear that. Replace it with this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, 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 you know, watch, watch, watch your mouth. Thank you for it. Yeah. And the reason I stress that is because I, I said this to somebody and he was like, man, I want to try that out. And I saw him mixing it with some other stuff. With another all purposes, I was like, "Hey, man, that's not how this thing works. Right? You can't play. You can't play for the Patriots and the Texans at the same time. Mm. Right, like, right, right, right. <laughs> you pick a mm. team. <laughs> that's Listen, it. I got, I, I got to get me mines because uh, I probably shouldn't use the Texans. They're a ter terrible team, but nonetheless, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm gonna get me mine, and you know the Hispanics has a certain seasoning, so we are gonna see. Yeah, gonna yeah, see. yeah, yeah. You know what oh, I mean? come on, we gonna see. What's um, your what's your what's your main seasoning? What's your go to? Come on, sazon. Come on, don't okay, do that. I knew but, I knew you was gonna say sazon. Yeah, I knew you, we, I knew that's, you was gonna that's, say that's the go to. That's the go to. You, you got all these other little ones, but that is you know, the foundation. You know what I mean? But yeah. Like and, I said. and being, being, being again having a uh, you know a, a Caribbean restaurant, you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm familiar because I know that is the base of a lot of you know the Caribbean food. That's all. So that's I'm, all we know. That's all yeah. we know. And <laughs> if you go to if you go to the grocery stores, it's yeah. all you know. Like right. there's yeah. nothing right. else. But they're not cutting a check, so I ain't going to give them too uh, much pub. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> ain't you know what check. However, if you want to, that you know the lines are open, but I'm not cutting. <laughs> I'm not saying no more. <laughs> Listen, um, like Moose said, uh, this is our way of giving flowers. Like, like I said, everybody was telling me, yo, the food is fire, it's banging, da da da, you gotta go. And I gotta say it's true, right? I gotta say it's true. And the way you just treated us like family, even though like you've met some and some you didn't even know. I don't think we even met in person. And right. it was like instant, like, I love you kind of thing. Yeah. So um, just for that, like, I wanted to definitely just say, I appreciate who you are, what you've done for the culture, not for, you know, in, in food industry, not for what you did in the community, like, just for culture. Right. Really, really appreciate that. And uh, if you need anything from us, literally, I'm, I'm back. I'm up and running. We're literally hey, a phone what, call away. Literally. What, what, what I need from y'all is what y'all doing, man, because because I, I promise that, you know, what what I what I what I listen to, what I see, what I hear when I'm when I'm watching the show, uh, when I'm watching the clips on, on IG uh, man, I mean, it's, it is just a, a fountain of, of valuable information. And 
and and it's out there. I mean, I look, I, I have young cats reaching out to me about about going into business and being in business, and you know, I'll, I'll give them how I started. But I, I I tell these cats today, man, you have no excuse for not being successful, zero excuse, right? Because between Google, right, and Instagram. And all the free information that's out there that we had to dig through books for and search through uh, uh, lockers and dig up, you know, in in in, in field, man, th- you have no excuse for right. not being successful with the wealth of information uh, that is out there and available to you. Starting with the Nikki and Moose podcast, tuck that on back. Tuck that tuck. Tuck that tuck. But real, real quick, we normally end it. With yeah. final words from Moose, but it wouldn't be right because we have you. So uh, leave leave the people with some final words. All right, uh, uh, good. I'm glad you said that because I I, I I did want to make we we were talking earlier about influence. We were talking about important people, and I and I and I I I want to I want to address that right. Um, the when you come into to the Breakfast Club. Uh, you are the celebrity, right? We believe that the folks that walk in our door day in and day out are the folks that deserve to be celebrated because they are participating in what we're doing. So with that being said, learn to celebrate everybody every day, regardless of, you know, their likes and their followers or their whomever, but if we come to celebrating each other for uh, for being humans, for being human beings, uh, for being uh, participants and collaborators in what we're doing, then I think we'll make the world a better place. Let's celebrate each other. 